Parameters allow you to make changes to queries and underlying data powering a report or dashboard without having to edit the SQL code directly, allowing a single dashboard to quickly adapt to support multiple use cases and teammates. To create an editable form field or input that will show up on your report's view page, you'll first need to define the parameter in the SQL code using a bracket percent notation. In this case, I've already defined a few things the name, example, the type, text, and the default, bar. This is what makes up the form field and what ultimately allows me to pass dynamic values through a query. This works by updating the value that gets passed here. When the query runs, it will replace bracket bracket example with the value. If I change default to foo and rerun the query, I can see that foo now gets returned. To better understand the SQL code that's being executed, let's open the Query History panel. The raw code displays exactly what we saw in the code editor, but if I switch over to Rendered, I can see that foo was actually inserted into the query and that the form was dropped, meaning that the form itself didn't actually get rendered in the query sent to the database. I can also open my report view page in a new tab to validate whether my parameter is working as expected. Now that we understand the basics of defining a parameter, let's look at some more examples and talk about some of the use cases. There are a few common types of parameter, text inputs, date forms, select options, and multi-select options. Let's briefly talk about why you might want to use each type of parameter. Here we have a dashboard that contains a lot of information about orders. By default, I can see that the data is returning details only for orders that have already been delivered but let's imagine I was actually more interested in understanding when and why certain shipments had failed to be delivered. By switching the status to failed, I can quickly rerun the same report and access the updated orders information. In this example, I replace the data for one status type with another. With date forms and select options, I'm not necessarily switching from one category to another, but rather refining the existing data. Perhaps I want to see orders that were at least $100 or orders within a few particular regions. I can customize the inputs here, rerun the data, and update the slice of data I'm viewing. If we open the same report in the editor, I can see that all the parameters are still using the same bracket percent notation. In the first example, descriptions were added to provide more context around the parameter and how it ought to be used. In the second example, the type had been set to select and the possible values have been listed out below. I can also see that each parameter is listed under the same form, which helps keep my query clean. The last thing to note is that I only have to define my parameters once. If I jump over to another query, I can reference the text example from query 1 without having to define the parameter a second time. Parameters are a great tool for allowing users to change queries without needing to edit the SQL code directly. With the ability to customize and update your data on demand, we can't wait to see what you create.